We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord. to the depths of the Seals him to bring us the coolness of night. 
none can fathom indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God incomparable unchangeable you see the depths of my heart and morning we came this morning hungry for a word of, of hope god feed us with your life giving love we came thirsty for healing in our world god quench our thirst with your waters of mercy we came begging for you to guide us in our journey god lead us with your your word today let us pray Lord, we gather with Christians all around the world to receive your nourishing word of justice and peace. Be with us to seek your will and wisdom. We remember that you walked with the people in the wilderness when they had given up hope. You offered them daily bread. We remember that Jesus walked to Jerusalem, healing the sick when they were cast out ahead of them. Today, let us remember that we are one with all of your children around the world. We all hunger, we all thirst, we all need your love. Let us pray together in whatever language you know best. The word of your son. Thank you, listeners. Thank you. Okay, it's still on. Thank you. Um, and let's all pray the Lord's Prayer together, shall we, in the language that we are most comfortable with. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. All right. At this time, I want to invite any kids, if they would like to come up to the mural with me. I see Robert and Ewan and Alex and Cameron. Do you guys want to come up? I want to talk to you all about a really important picture we have over here. What's up, Robert? How are you, bud? How are you? You fun at Camp Caroline? Hi, Ewan. Hey, Alex. Hey, Cameron. You ought to come over here. So we're going to gather around this picture, and we're going to stay in a circle, and we're going to keep our some space between each other. All right. So for those who are watching at home, Miss Kelsey did another worship and wonder story. Have, have you all seen any videos on YouTube from church, worship and wonder stories, or maybe me reading a bedtime story to you guys? Have you all seen some of those videos, Robert and Ewan? You have? All right, so there's another worship and wonder story for Miss Kelsey on the story of creation today. So um, that'll be there for you to watch tonight when you get home or sometime later this week. So I want us to talk about this picture real quick. Does anybody, do you recognize this picture? Robert, let's not kick the picture. Do you recognize it? Did any of you help color one of these pictures that you see on here? Have you done that yet? What about any folks out here? Did anybody help color one of these pictures? You might not remember. It was back in March, April, around Lent and Easter. We sent out pictures to everyone with the hope that when we gathered again together, we could put all of our pictures up here and we would create a beautiful mural. So um, today, what we're going to do is as we sing and worship and pray together, 
we are going to have, we have all the rest of these pictures need to be colored in. So if, have you already gotten a clipboard with a picture? Did someone give one to you when you walked in? So what's really important is if you can help color that picture for us, and then before you leave, we're going to put it up there um, in, in the right spot and help fill in our mural picture, okay? And what I really like about this mural is it reminds us about the story of God and how it's really important that we need each of our pictures to help us see God's big picture. So if we just had Alex's picture up here, if we just had Ewan's picture up here, we would only see a small part of God's big picture. But when we bring all of our pictures together, all the pictures from Miss Jackie and from the Fairchilds and from the Cenotuses, when we put all those pictures up here, we get a glimpse of God's big picture. So every time we gather for church, when we play together, when we love our neighbor, we get a gl glimpse of God's big picture of love for the world. Does that sound cool? So let's color our pictures today. Adults, if you would like, we have some more clipboards with coloring pencils. Ann Timmons work, is working on one over here. And we're going to slowly over the next couple of weeks fill in our mural. All right, now do you guys remember the prayer that we pray together after children's moments? Y'all go to 902 a lot, so we haven't probably prayed the prayer. It goes like this. You can repeat after me. God be with us till we meet again. We meet again. Amen. Amen. Guys, you can go back to your parents now. All right. So a reminder that for the folks at home that we have another uh, worship and wonder um, story on our YouTube page. And there is also a direct link to that video um, in the description of our Facebook Live. So as we prepare our hearts to pray this morning, um, we continue to hold the family of Liz Rouse. As most of you probably heard, Liz passed this past Wednesday. Um, we rejoice that she is now reunited with her husband Bill and with her God, um, but we will definitely miss Liz's vibrant um, spirit in our community. Liz and Bill's children and family have decided to wait until next year, and they will hold a joint memorial service for both Liz and Bill when we're able to safely gather again together. So we look forward to that, that day to celebrate their life. As usual, there are other prayer concerns and joys on our prayer list that's included in our midweek email, so make sure and check that out to stay up to date on other prayer concerns. So as we enter into a time of prayer together, let's take a moment of silence to awaken our hearts and minds to God's presence all around us. Creator God, this morning as we bask in your light, feel the crisp air on our skin, and worship once again in community with one another, we are filled with gratitude. God, these moments rejuvenate our spirits and fill us with new life. Just when we aren't sure how much longer we can hold on, when we aren't sure if things will ever turn around, when we grow weary of injustice and isolation, we are gifted with moments of hope and peace and joy. As the psalmist wrote, Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. God, we ask that your presence would comfort those worshiping from home. We pray for those traveling, recovering from illness, those who need to take extra precautions. We give thanks that you are, you are not a God who stands far off from us, but is with us in the midst of our suffering and isolation. You are Emmanuel. God, on this World Communion Sunday, we rejoice that your table is ever-expanding. In a world where our worthiness is often picked apart, we find welcome, refuge, and nourishment at Christ's table. We pray for the food that is collected today and taken to urban ministries. We pray for the families and homes who will receive this food. May this small gift serve as a reminder of your love and grace a taste of wholeness in our broken world. God, even in these difficult days, we know that you hear us, that you care, 
And we ask that your love and compassion and justice may be incarnated in us as we go about the work of healing your world and all its peoples. In Jesus' name, amen. to you for I know satisfied I am empty but I know your love does not run dry so I wait for you so I wait for you I'm falling on my knees I'm Special thanks to all of our tech volunteers and greeters and ushers. Um, as you all can see now, some of the behind the scenes work it takes to bring uh, virtual worship um, to folks at home. Um, and a special thanks to our band. Um, they're going to help with the scripture reading this morning. This is uh, continuing our journey through the wilderness with the folks uh, in Exodus. Today's scripture comes from Exodus 16. The whole congregation of Israelites set out from Elam. And Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness, was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. 
When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, and omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing left over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. Thanks be to the word of God and for God's miraculous gift. Trail angels are a welcome sight for backpackers who are hiking the Appalachian Trail. Now, trail angels, I don't know what you're thinking, but they are not mystical beings that hikers see in their dreams when they are just too tired and have been in the woods too long. They are actually very real people who show up to offer unexpected generosity to hungry and weary hikers along the trail. Imagine hiking all 2,200 miles of the Appalachian Trail, carrying everything you need on your back. Once every week or two, you might come close enough to a town to buy more food and replenish your stash. So it's truly a heavenly vision when you happen upon somebody who is handing out free food along the way, called trail magic. Trail magic could be anything from packets of ramen noodles or candy bars or donuts to hot cooked food like pizza or hot dogs. Trail angels might also offer to refill your water bottle or to take some of the trash you have been carrying to relieve you of your extra weight. Now, hikers never know when this surprise manna from heaven might appear. It might be just a few days into their trek at the very beginning or after months out on the trail. But it can revive them in body and spirit when they grow hungry for extra calories or for just a nice treat or even just some human interaction. After all, even the most beautiful and inspiring wilderness journeys can challenge us at times. We can all use a little trail magic to help us on our journey from time to time, whether that is our physical journey or our spiritual journey. We all get hungry. It's a universal human experience that we have in common, no matter where we come from or how much we have. We all hunger for food to nourish our bodies. And we all hunger for those less tangible things that give life meaning. Love and belonging, connection and purpose, health, safety, justice, hope. And so on this World Communion Sunday, we remember that it is our common hunger that brings all of us to the table, seeking to be revived for our journey. Whether we are an Italian Catholic worshiping in the Vatican, a Haitian Pentecostal dancing in an open-air church, one of the small minority of Christians in rural Sri Lanka who are receiving the bread and cup in a 400-year-old church built by Dutch missionaries, a Montagnard meeting in a small house church in Plegrat, or a North Carolina disciple sharing communion, communion virtually with our St. Paul's community. What unites us all is our shared need for God's unconditional grace that is offered in equal measure to every single one of us. Here at the Lord's table, we all get what we need. In the wilderness, too, the Israelites were given what they needed when they grew hungry on their long journey. 
In Exodus 16, when we hear them today, the supplies that they've carried with them from Egypt have run out. And they start to complain to Moses about having no food. But God hears their cries and sends them bread from heaven. At first, the people are not quite sure what to make of this strange new substance. What is it, they ask, when they see the flakes covering the ground? And it's this question, what is it, man, who, in Hebrew, that becomes the name of the bread, manna? It is truly a strange new kind of food. Everyone gets exactly what they need to eat for that day, but no more. This is trail magic that cannot be hoarded or stored or saved for next week. It is a food that forms a different kind of community. No one can gather more at the expense of someone else. No one can be richer in manna than their neighbor. Every morning, there is enough for all. I wonder how the manna changed the relationships between people as the need to compete for limited resources went away. We come to God hungry for love and for mercy, and God offers us exactly what we need, enough for each one of us. But often, in unexpected ways, ways we don't recognize when we first see it, in ways that challenge our habits, that change our relationships, and that free us from our selfish tendencies. We may not recognize how God is nourishing us at first, when it shows up in a way that we haven't seen it before, maybe in a way we haven't quite asked for. Those of you who are here at St. Paul's this morning might have looked at the little weird communion cup you were offered when you came in and asked, what is it? It's a strange little wafer sealed on top of this cup. This isn't the kind of communion that we are used to especially on World Communion Sunday when we normally have a table heaping with all kinds of exciting uh, breads representing different cultures. And for those of us who are used to uh, having communion at home now, we might be used to having some nice hot coffee or orange juice and maybe a muffin or bagel as our communion elements. But we show up today and we accept this strange little sterile package as a means of tasting God's goodness, because we know that we want to protect each other's health. We have been forced to change our practices and our perspective in a lot of ways during this season of uncertainty. And yet, even in new and unfamiliar ways, God continues to respond to our hunger. God continues to invite us to be a different kind of community in which all are welcomed and all are fed without condition, without competition. God provides for our needs in surprising ways, especially during wilderness times. In our hunger to connect, we may find authentic community in forms that were once foreign to us, like Zoom or Facebook Live. In our hunger for Sabbath rest, we may discover that the less hectic rhythm of virtual church has helped us to make more space for prayer in our lives. In our hunger for justice during this season of noticing racial equalities more clearly, we may have been given a new boldness to speak out and powerful new resources to help us grow in understanding. In our hunger for love and acceptance, we come to this communion table and may find that we are moved to love and accept others whose experiences are vastly different from our own. How does the nourishment God gives us at this table, change our relationship with our neighbor. When we know that we are fed without condition, 
without having to compete for God's love, that we don't have to ration out forgiveness or hoard God's goodness, there is enough for all. How does that change us and how we relate to those around us? It doesn't matter what language we use to praise God or what kind of bread we break. There is always enough for all of us at this table. And so we become the kind of community, to quote theologian Walter Brueggemann, that believes bread that is broken and shared has power for life that bread does not have when it is unbroken and unshared when it is guarded and hoarded. On this World Communion Sunday, let us stop to remember that not only are we united by our common hunger, we are also united by the way that God feeds all of us, no matter how far we have wandered. Let us become people who share generously with others on our journey, trusting that God provides. And let us also be people who are open to being fed by God, whenever and however God shows up with nourishment on our journey. If you are hungry for God's love, then today you are invited to come to this table and be fed, knowing that there is enough for all of us. Today, in celebration of World Communion Sunday, I'm going to invite you to learn a few new ways to welcome people to the table. So we're going to practice um, offering a mealtime blessing, a a simple enjoy your food in a few different languages. So you're invited to repeat after me and see if you can pick up these phrases. Now the first one, I'm sure many of you already know, um, in French. When you're about to share a meal, you just say, bon appétit, right? Let's practice that together, bon appétit. And it's pretty similar in German. You say, guten appétit. Guten appétit, right. Um, In Spanish, it's buen provecho. Buen provecho. Nice, very good. Is that right? All right. Greek, perhaps, you know, more biblical times, people would have heard some Greek. Um, I'm not guaranteeing these pronunciations are 100% accurate, but in Greek, it's haliurexi. Sounds pretty good. Um, Chinese, jing zhang zhong. Nice. You sound great. All right. We're going to do one more, um, but I couldn't get it this morning, so Gloon is going to come up and teach it to us in Jirai, how to say, enjoy your food, and then he will bless and share our feast. I learned that uh, at first uh, English and I talk him about Jirai too. I want to we are know about it. We prepare for communion. Today I talk about uh, thank you God for food today. He talk to me uh, two languages, English and dry. Thank you. Now we say thank you God food today. Today we sit with each other. We talk with each other. Thank you. We have a uh, cup. And bread today. Thank you. And now I speak with my language. Not money. I die. My yum dong menang hoa. Let me let I oi ding cup. But I soy that my my cup you dang cup jack me. That my yo. My jang a organ ding ingol me. Num ding yang wang me yo. My jang a oh yeah ding dang yang te that I ding a ham habit cup cup. Gathering 
gathered with the disciples, we remember that Jesus took the bread. And blessed it and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you share this, do it in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and said, this is a new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Every time you drink this, remember me and my love for you. our prayer thanksgiving prayers to come forward and pray. Let us pray. We thank you that your love is big enough to fill the whole world as we come together to remember your gift today. We think about people all over the world who are doing the same thing. Like every group of you welcome, let every person be fed. We thank you for everything you have, you have in life to bring people to that same. at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. And I won't hunger anymore at his table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at his table. Come all you weary, come and find. His yoke is easy, his burden light. He is able, he will restore at the table. table of the Lord. There is peace at the table of the Lord. And I won't worry anymore at his table. There is healing at the table of the Lord. There is healing at the table of the Lord. And I won't suffer anymore at his table. Come all you weary, come and find. His yoke is easy, his burden light. He is able, he will restore at the table of the Lord. I know he has a place for me. What joy will Table of the Lord. We're invited to the 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 table of the Lord. We
Jesus, come just as you are to his table. All right, as we conclude um, our time of worship, I have a couple of announcements for our community. Um, the first is a reminder that this Tuesday at 7 p.m., Steve Weirchuk and a few others from St. Paul's leadership are going to be available for any questions folks might have about the annual budget. Um, that budget was passed a couple weeks ago, voted on by the board, and so this is a chance for the congregation to ask any questions. It's not a formal meeting. It's just if you have questions, 7 p.m. on Zoom on Tuesday. And following uh, that time, we will send out the, the budget um, to be voted on via Google form or by phone. So that'll be coming later this week. Um, another exciting announcement for our community is it's officially October. So do we know what it means it's almost time for? Fairchild's table? Crop walk. Yep, so crop walk will take place later this month. Um, we obviously won't be walking with the entire Triangle community but there will still be opportunities to either walk on your own or in a small group um, with our church following our um, worship service on October 25th. So if you're planning to walk or if you would like to donate, uh, stop by the crop walk table on your way out. There's also a link in the midweek email to our team webpage where you can get signed up, donate, things like that. So we know that food insecurity um, has only increased in our communities with COVID-19, so our generosity and participation is um, needed just as much this year as any other year. So thanks to the Fairchilds and our outreach team as they continue these efforts. Um, last but certainly not least, I think this outdoor worship service went well today. You know, we're figuring it out, our, our, a few techniques. Let's give a big round of applause to our tech team. Um, so we appreciate your grace and flexibility and generosity as we navigate um, with new formats. Um, super thankful for congregational leadership that's helped make this happen. Um, so I think for the near future, we'll continue meeting outdoors at 11 on Sundays. Um, so bring your blankets and jackets, um, and hopefully we'll get a little bit more sunlight next week. So super thankful. It's great to see all of you out here. Um, also, we will continue streaming on Facebook and YouTube. If folks are traveling or if they feel more comfortable at home, um, we will continue virtual worship as well for the foreseeable future. And now you're invited to join me in a reading of our communal benediction. You will see that either on your bulletin, on your phone or paper, um, or on your screen for folks online. May the Lord go in front of you by day to lead you along the way. May God give you light by night and never leave you. In steadfast love, may God guide you through the wilderness. Amen.